Hi, welcome back. In this video, we'll be assembling frame 10, and there's two unique components to this build that I'd like to discuss. The first is with regard to the strong back legs, you actually have to add a spacer between the cross member and the frame to ensure that the strong back legs are parallel to the frame. And the second is down here at the keel. The original plans do not call for a keel filler or keel gusset. I am adding them because I have not decided on the powertrain for this boat yet. And what I'll do in this video is show how I've used Shaper Studio to custom design a keel filler and a keel gusset. But for now, let's take a look at Dan Lee's explanation for why there's no keel filler in the design. Frame 10 differs from the other frames quite a bit because there's actually a section that is going to be cut out in the middle of this further down the line. So let's take a little look at how frame 10 is different. So I've got frame 10 set up on the construction board and you will see that there is no keel gusset. So the two halves of frame 10 actually aren't connected to each other right now. Why is that done? Well, frame 10 is in this position here in the boat. And that actually will land right where the bottom of the V-Drive gearbox will sit when the engine goes in the boat. And we're gonna be very tight on space in that area. So frame 10 is actually partially sacrificial and will be, um, will be cut out of the boat at a later stage. I'm deviating from the plan set because I haven't decided if I'll use a gas powered engine or if I'll use an electric motor to power the boat. And by the time I have to make that decision, at the rate that I'm building this, a flux capacitor or an arc reactor could be available. So the first thing I need to do is design my keel filler. In Shaper Studio, I upload the hardwood frame components and import them as separate objects. Then I delete everything but keel filler 11. Ultimately, I want to make a replica of keel filler 11 without the protrusions on the mating surface. I could have simply cut out a replica of keel filler 11, but I wanted to use the shape shifter tool in Shaper Studio. I simply created a triangle and am adjusting it to match the mating surface of keel filler 11. Now I select all the objects, press shape shifter, and select the objects that I want to keep in my shape. I drag the work surface back over the shape and rename the file Keel Filler 10. I plan the outside cuts with a quarter inch bit and move on to design the keel gussets. Again, I'm using frame 11 as my guide and deleting all of the objects except keel gusset 11. In comparison to keel gusset 11, keel gusset 10 needs to have a four inch wide opening and the height of the gusset needs to be three eighths inch taller. This time, I'll add a number of different shapes but only keep the shapes that I need in the final part using Shape Shifter. For some reason I had a stray line in the center of the gusset, but I'll just ignore it when I cut out the gusset. Out in the workshop, I'll cut the keel filler out of a scrap piece of sapili. Using the Shaper Origin, I scan the work surface. Create a new grid defining the X and Y axes. Upload, place, and position the design on the work surface. Change the shaper origin over to cut mode. 
complete a Z-Touch. Turn on the spindle. And begin cutting. Next, I cut out the keel gussets from half-inch marine plywood. I sanded the keel filler to improve the fit into the frame. I've been traveling recently, so I didn't have any cottage cheese containers. You may have noticed that I've been inconsistent in my use of masking tape. It's really just a matter of time savings, but if you can use the masking tape, the finished part will look much more professional. As I move on to the thickened epoxy, you may be able to see some signatures on the boards. When friends have come over for bourbon and boat building, I ask them to sign the frame components that they've cut out. A professor once told me you can save an entire afternoon in the library by working a whole month in the lab. This is a point where I wish I would have spent a little bit more time looking at the plans. What I'm showing here is the wrong way to align and attach the strong back legs, but you have to see this to understand how I reverse this later on. The position of the strong back legs relative to the water line 
is correct. So I can continue to use these marks later on. Before I realized that I had installed the strong back legs incorrectly, I flipped the frame over, sanded off the excess epoxy, and permanently attached the gussets with thickened epoxy and silicon bronze screws. Now, back to the strong back legs. In looking at the 3D model, we see that the strong back legs connect directly to the bottom frame component. And to keep the strong back legs parallel to the frame, we need a spacer between the frame and the cross member. As I undo this mistake, I'm careful to reuse the exact same holes so that the water lines remain correct on the strong back legs. Here I'm checking to ensure the screw goes back through the exact same hole in the strong back leg. That completes frame 10. Till next time, let's enjoy the sunset in Knoxville, Tennessee.